I'm always excited when there's a new Casual Geographic video, but when I have to wait for one, and I have waited quite a while, a few weeks to watch this one, it's even better because I know it's going to be there. And I know that people are going to be fired up about seeing our reaction to it. Yes. Because um, it's a fan favorite. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of Casual Geographic. I'm a huge fan of animals, as you can tell. I got this guy laying across my lap. Sushi had just joined us. Um, and this guy, it's every video I learn something new. Yeah, absolutely. And it's in a way that I can, like, remember it, too. It's yeah, not I just... wish that I would have learned more, like, school stuff this way. Right. Like, somebody a peer, almost even, just breaking it down right. in a way that is relatable and funny and punny and witty and it's gonna stick. Jeff Corwin was corny as fuck man let's just be real I mean I still of watch course, the shit out of it though of course we had uh, Steve boom, Irwin boom. Steve Irwin was legend R.I.P. gone too soon uh, and that was like the only guy back in the day it was like Bill Nye the science guy was good uh, Steve Irwin was good but there wasn't much else. Uh, well, Reading Rainbow was the shit there for a while. But there wasn't much else that really made an impact on me that we was would watch the in Crass, school. The Crass Brothers? The Craft Brothers? The Cra Zaboomba Foo? I the didn't watch Zaboomba Foo. I am younger than you, but Zaboomba Foo, that I didn't watch it. me. You didn't watch it? No. That's like when people talk about like the Nickelodeon shit and they're like, Oh my God, Dan Schneider did all this shit that like, you know, it ruined my childhood. I was like, no, nah, man, I watched the cartoons that came way before Dan old. Schneider. I'm just old. Um, so for me, like, you know, Wishbone, Wishbone, Wishbone was an animal that taught me a lot. That guy was a savage, but Casual Geographic, you know, just not corny, not cheesy, funny as hell. And when he makes a mistake, he lets you know. Yeah. And he apologizes for it because nobody's perfect. But as far as content creation goes on YouTube, on TikTok, short form, long form, uh, for the short form, long form, transitional style, yeah, he and Mr. Ballin are like some of the best at that. And I am totally stoked to watch The Island Too Strange to Belong on Earth. Galapagos? Who knows? We're going to check this video out, and we're going to find out from the man himself. If you guys are ready, let's get into it. Let's go. If Narnia and the Twilight Zone had a one-night stand with enough hallucinogens to make the castle Euphoria flinch, <laughs> you'd get this island. What happens when you combine snow-seasoned beaches, sky-molesting reaches, air so clean you'd swear it bleaches, a hippie Satanist wet dream jungle, and animals not even Dr. Seuss on Adderall could come up with? You'd get a place with enough worlds for a Mario side-scroller, all packed into an island the size of West Virginia. Tasmania really? is like the lesser-known DLC spin-off of Australia. It was originally connected to Australia as part of a polyamorous land situation known as Gondwana, until they divorced and Tasmania moved out on its own. But not without attachment issues, since it's only about 150 miles off the mainland. Holy shit. It's fitting you can't spell Taz without mania, because one day in Australia's draft folder will have you seriously reevaluating your sanity. Everything's just backwards. The seasons are flipped with summer being December to late February and winter being June to September. And if you want to fall without tripping, you'll have to march first. And because of the rain shadow effect in the many mountains of Tasmania, the west half of the island gets five times the rain the east does. What? Making the landscape more bipolar than the animal it's known for. Speak of the devil, we'll get to them. And that wombat is definitely not sleeping. But that's exactly the kind of mind to expect from a land where the toilets flush backwards. In fact, we can start right there. Your introduction to how weird Tasmania can get starts the day you lay cheek on a seat without checking. Ah! Oh, you get your tent tickled by a frog in your toilet. It happens so often that it's one of the things Australians just accept as a fact of life. What do you get? No. It's like a fairy frog trying to be a prince but got confused and went for the wrong lips, but it honestly could be worse. Just think about being the frog. Imagine yeah. thinking you're at a water park, but then looking up to an ice hole, dropping bombs like it's here. Oh, and while getting your bathing suit area caressed by Kermit would surely put a dent in your mental, the frog's technically not dangerous and definitely not the worst thing you can find. Oh, no, snakes. Imagine dropping uh -uh. Oh, no. just to see the highly venomous Tasmanian no. tiger snake. I have such a fear of that. And yes, 
That's actually happened. Uh -oh. What a family of also venom is Jack Jumper ants in your kitchen. Now, their sting is a jihad to wasp, but only mildly painful in humans, unless you're allergic, in which case they'll tattoo your name on a headstone. It's like I always say, the odds might be low, but they're not zero. In Tasmania, you can have frogs causing clogs, but how about a disaster in your plaster? Do me a favor real quick, close your eyes. Go ahead, do it. Now imagine after a long, stressful day on your feet, you finally get into bed, nestle yourself under the covers, the room is the perfect temperature, it's nice and dark, and slowly drift off into that familiar, inviting world of s Congrats, you've just had the experience every Australian has at one point. The day you find out your roommate's with a brush tailed possum. The oh, those Swiss are metal. so cute! The personality trait involves breaking into houses and living there rent free, <laughs> all while serving the soundtrack of Satan getting his prostate punched. And they're a protected species, so they're above the law, which is how they end up in Looney Tunes levels of nonsense. There was one time a brush tailed oh broke into and trashed some woman's office, but in his defense, he's sorry. This possum broke into yes! a video. I've Guaranteed seen that. I'm sorry is the last thing, well, <laughs> other than half digested pastries coming out of his mouth. In their defense, they are cute. And they their are vision fucking might be cute, poor, but they'll still peek at you. They're living proof that out of fight oh, or spite, man. life in Tasmania will find a way. Take these rocks, for example. The rocks, called dolerite, were formed cool by magma shit. getting pushed up through the crust, kind of like a pimple that can extend up to 300 meters above the sea, or okay. just under 1,000 feet. You might think nothing could get any use out of Earth's acne, but it's actually a popular rest stop for fur seals, where they can take a break from hunting oh. without also getting packed into a lunchbox by a great white. There's about 50 of these seal service areas Cute. across the island, with over 2,000 seals taking advantage, and if you look further out, you'll see they're not the only ones. Humpback whales will travel from their freezing feeding grounds to warmer waters to have calves and back again, and we used to think they just fasted the entire time for six months. But it turns out, humpbacks will use the waters off Tasmania, like truckers at a diner, as a place to refuel on the way home. The sights don't end once you get on the beach either. If you're lucky, you might catch a leatherback freight train no of a turtle way. heading back to sea. If you're a that little less so lucky, cool. you'll run into a leopard seal that thought it was too good for directions. You know, it's not until you see these Looks things online that you realize just how bad penguins got it. Yeah. It's rare, but every once in a while, the rubber assault sub wanders from Antarctica and ends up in Australia's <laughs> understudy. You might think they're cute, but let me remind you, they have a confirmed human body count. Besides, yeah. there's another seal I think you'd rock with even more. This is Neil, Neil the seal, for real. He's a southern elephant seal that's what? honestly been bullying the small town of Dunhaly. <laughs> Just accepts it. Get out of here! Neil is the law and the landlord. Elephant seals are notorious oh, for their intrinsic disdain shit. for human infrastructure. Neil is no different. As far as he's concerned, it's his town. Y'all just renting it. All that adds up to a plus size pinniped with an attitude problem. An attitude everyone just puts up with because isn't that just the most Australian fing thing you could do? And apparently Neil's still out here being a menace, so if Dude, you live in Tasmania, you might hurt. just get a visit Neil. from him. Just make sure you have a sick day in the chamber in case a 1300 pound sausage decides to park in front of your car. And because Tasmania, you can go from a diet job of the hut on your lawn to the world's smallest penguin. Fairy penguins spend most of their time at sea, oh. but once a year they'll return to land to Fairy shack up, penguins. get a nice burrow, what? and eventually start a family. The penguin dream. It's adorable until they choose to shack up under your house and you find out what a pint sized penguin vow renewal sounds like. Is that it sleeping? So. I owe you an apology. But since Australia is nothing but a compromise with nature, they get the same diplomatic immunity as Neil. There's even places where you can watch hordes of travel-sized blue penguins coming home after a long day at sea. And if you're really lucky, you'll see what happens when he comes home to his wife getting her plumbing fixed by someone else. Pro tip though, they don't like bright lights, but they're chill around red. I, I don't really know why, but them's the rules. Speaking of rules, you've probably heard of island gigantism, where animals become the supersized version of themselves if they've been marooned long enough. Tasmania is no exception. The difference is it led to the biggest tree in the world. This is Eucalyptus regnans. It's one of the few trees with a pyro kink, since they can only reproduce by releasing seeds from pods after they've caught on fire. But because what? of the rain shadow what? effect and one side of the island getting way more rain than the other, it also means way less fires. So they kind of just keep growing. Not only can they grow taller than the Statue of Liberty at over 300 feet, many of these trees are well over hundreds of years old since that was the last big fire. Some of the oldest can be 500. That's half a millennium of waiting to spread their seed. Talk about getting pushed to the edge. Yeah. 
That's how you get these prehistoric, almost alien looking Jurassic playgrounds dominating the western That's half so of Tasmania. Cool. Yeah. These not only make it one of the biggest temperate rainforests in the world, but Tasmania is one of the few places on earth with a negative carbon footprint. And I believe it. Just looking wow. at this, I could tell that O2 hit different. But also don't forget, the same island that's just over 150 miles from Australia is also a little over 1,500 miles from the frostbitten loins of the land, Antarctica. Yeah. So technically, it should be no surprise it can also get a good amount of snow, even at the beaches. And maybe it's just me. Y'all can let me know, but... I had no idea kangaroos could be around the concept Me of snow. Me neither. I did not think that was something they had to deal with. That's crazy. But yeah, the forests of Tasmania are definitely something out of a fever dream. Stevie Wonder could walk through it and see that. Mostly because you don't even need to see. The soundtrack of the Avil Isle is trippy enough. Like the kookaburra. The bird who carried the careers of sound engineers by being the stock voice of the jungle. And if you've ever watched Flipper or that one time Spongebob tested the FCC, both of those were just a sped up cracked out call of the kookaburra. Also, they're not even native to Tasmania, but were brought in to violate snakes. Oh. So were lyrebirds, except they were brought in for their own good. And lyrebirds are able to mimic anything around them, and not just other birds. There was a lyrebird named Chook who lived in the Adelaide Zoo while a new exhibit was being built. So guess what he did? Construction? Okay, that Whoa. one's crazy. <laughs> and here you have a lyrebird imitating a child. Oh my god! And while cosplaying as a chainsaw is cool, the gaslight potential is too outrageous to not be acknowledged. There's other birds too. You probably know this as a carnage, happy hell Tweety and a literal black Air Force. <laughs> but Tasmanian magpies don't swoop, and neither I nor science have any idea why. Also, I don't know what I thought a goth canary sounded like, but it certainly wasn't this. I'm as confused as you. If you look up into the trees, you might find the eye-catching Tasmanian Rosella, or the tawny frogmouth, which is Whoa. quite literally the opposite. Truly a Muppet of a bird, yeah. but it's the Muppet Tasmania deserves. And then you have the Nightjar. Wow. A little known fact about them is they actually Very have cute. an even smaller Siamese twin of a bird right by where their beak's supposed to be. And now you'll never be. Wow, do you see it? That's not the yeah. weirdest animal in Tasmania. That would have to be. Yep, we've entered the platypus portion. Yes. It will take a whole nother video to describe all the ways this identity crisis is a middle finger to the natural order. So here's some highlights. One of my favorite animals. They have no animals. nipples, so they sweat milk. They have no teeth, so they chew with rocks. They have no stomach, it goes straight down their gullet. They swim blind and deaf and use electrical impulses like sharks to find prey, because of course they do. And they have one all-purpose hole that was apparently so fascinating their entire family reunion got named after it. The only animal in their league of eccentricity, yeah weird was just too bland a word for them, is the echidna. It's also a stomachless, Very egg leg, no sweating, water-loving monotreme. They're a lot like the Greek guard dog soldiers, oh! so heads, they have four, instead of on their shoulder, there is this south of the border. Echidnas have a fire hydrant with four nozzles, and only two can come to a conclusion at a time. And speaking of erupting heads, I'm really about to blow your mind. So you probably know the wow. Disney show Phineas and Ferb with character Perry the Platypus, created by Dan Povenmire, who came up with a concept for a teal tinted monotreme in 1993. And obviously platypes aren't green in nature, or at least not the live ones. Except in late 2020, scientists discovered the walking custard factory glows under UV light. Mm, Take a wild yeah. guess what color. Yeah. Yeah, this goes right at the top. Their <laughs> quadrupine cousins glow too. In fact, we found out that a lot, if not most, Australian mammals show out under ultraviolet. Wow! And yeah, if anyone has a reason other than that's just Australia, I would love to hear it. And if you thought it couldn't get weirder, one, you're not giving Tasmania oh. nearly enough credit, and two, there's an animal here that catches bodies and uses light to do it. Mm. This underground light show is a cave full of glowworms. They're not worms, but the larvae of a type of gnat that uses bioluminescence to lure insects in and a thread hanging from the cave ceiling to trap wow. them. Straight out of the page of the Anglerfish Playbook. Once a victim flies too close to the sun, the larva pulls them up to revoke their existence. Sea sparkles are a lot less dramatic, and these are caused by bioluminescent plankton that, like sketchers, light up when disturbed. 
I actually went to a bioluminescent bay in the Cayman Islands, and even though it means swimming in a microscopic mosh pit, it's definitely a trippy ride everyone should experience at least once. But it has nothing on Aurora Australis. Now I could give you the scientific explanation that the lights come from charged particles from the sun hitting atoms in the atmosphere, getting them more riled up than a fan getting an athlete's sweat sleeve, and releasing energy in the form of light. But it's honestly easier to say of course an island stoned off its gourd would have a sky on shrooms. Which is actually close to the other thing Tasmania is famous for. Tasmania is the world's leading producer of the building blocks for opiates and supplies half of Earth's ingredients for morphine, fentanyl, mm. and everything else in the average episode of Euphoria. In 2009, mysterious crop circles appearing in fields had farmers all forms of befuddled until they realized it was just wallabies downing poppy plants, getting more cooked than the ops of Sweeney Todd, and hopping around in circles until eventually passing out. There were respected members of the scientific community that said it was aliens. Whole time it was an economy sized kangaroo eating enough product to have Horton hearing a who, what, and a how. Cockatoos get lit <laughs> off the too, but at least with them, they're only feeding after the seeds and not just getting higher than their wings can take them. But wallabies walling out is a problem for one very crucial reason. Tasmania is also the roadkill capital of the world. It's oh, said that 32 auto-assisted census subtractions occur every hour. And since wombats are walking cinder blocks with a rear end of retribution, they have the potential to drive a literal wedge between your car and the road. Leading the world in furry four-wheeled flatlines is bad for them, but great for one animal. This wombat's in a nightmare, but he's not dreaming, cause Tasmanian devils will live up to their name by feeding on carcasses from the inside out. Wait, to wait, the wait, point wait, where wait, wait. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. They the go up their the asses. Cane. And at the size of a small dog, devils have the most damaging bite relative to body size of any mammal. Clearly Brush Tales took voice coaching from them, since they literally got their name from settlers touching down on Tasmania and hearing what a devil dinner party sounds like. But they're pretty well known, unlike their close cousin, the Quoll. I don't know how they fly under the what? radar because where devils are mostly scavengers, quolls mostly eat what they kill. And considering there have been over 100 cases of quolls feeding on human remains, 111 to be exact, that devil title looking real fraudulent. Right? Quolls also have an alternate black morph, proving that down. any animal oh. with an Oreo colorway lives on demon timing. The Tasmanian devil's biggest op is their own kind. They're so bite happy that it's a big reason for the spread of devil facial tumor disease. And considering biting's basically foreplay to them, it's like an STD that's done an absolute number on their population. Holy and there's a shit. real fear it can cause them to go the way of the thylacine. The thylacine's been called the Tasmanian tiger or the Tasmanian wolf. I've seen it's actually that the before. other dominant predatory marsupial, and one Tasmanian of the few times tiger. an animal got gaslit into extinction. I have a... Bounties were put on their heads, and not only were people saying thylacines were marking 50,000 sheep a year in a place that didn't have more than 40k max. Later evidence says that their jaws might have been too weak to even murk a sheep. To be fair, if that's true, nature set them up. And in 1936, the last known thylacine named Benjamin died in the Hobart Zoo, almost fittingly enough after being locked out of his sleeping area and the bipolar Tasman weather finished him off. But from everything we've learned about Tasmania, you knew they weren't gonna let that slide. Since 2005, devil diehards have been creating insurance populations of those without the disease and even established an inaugural class of imps on the nearby Maria Island. Mm. There have also been efforts to create a vaccine to save the mascot of Tassie, and as of 2023, it's officially been approved for testing. And after a 3,000 year devil absence, Tasmanian devils were born on the Australian mainland after 44 of them were drafted in 2011 to a breeding program for the Aussie Art Devil Project, which, Definitely sounds like a cult. You even got dogs working as wingmen for the devils by smelling when a female's ready to mate, date, and procreate so they can get her set up with a male. Wow. Since then, about 500 joeys have joined the devil database and they might not be the <laughs> only ones making a comeback. There's a good number of people that believe that the thylacine is still out there. And with a lot of the Tasman wilderness being straight up inaccessible to most people, maybe the tiger of Tasmania is still out there in the shadows. And honestly, staying low key is probably their best move. But that's really yeah. Tasmania as a whole. How such a medley of mind fuckery and generational balderdash can be so underrated is beyond me. But if I've learned anything about Tasmanians, that's exactly how they want it. But that's gonna do it for this video that was actually inspired by this animation by Felix Colgrave. I'm not gonna spoil too much, but it basically shows you what a day in the Tasman wilderness might look wow. like. I'm gonna put a link in the description. Definitely go check yeah. that out. Friendly Sounds reminder crazy. that I am selling calendars. Link will also be down below. Drink water, hug your parents. If you see a thylacine for their own good, no you didn't. And I'm gonna see y'all no, in did. the next one. Devil's got my pack of lint. What's it got? It's got my what? Fuzzy devil got my lean. Oh no! no. <laughs>
Holy smokes. I love how both of these babies are up here asleep. Oh, yeah. Um, We've got this little turkey here. And then Gigi. Yeah, you can hardly even see them because they're both gray. Um, I, wanna, I never wanted to go to that. Tasmania. No, literally whenever we were watching that and it was showing the rainforest and how beautiful, I was like, maybe that's where we could go for maybe our honeymoon. Maybe we just need to, need to move to Tasmania. No, I'm not. I don't, mm -mm, I don't think I want to move there. Why not? Beca because don't I don't want wanna... those little possum things to sneak into because our house. Because you potentially have Crohn's disease and yeah. when you be shitting, you be shitting and... I BS. Um, I be shitting. I don't think that you would want to a do that. Or a snake. With a snake. That's like my biggest fear. Literally. Sometimes I'll drop a whole snake. <laughs> There's like a wrestling thing that you, the, the story, maybe it was the Iron Sheik who like, or like somebody who had a snake. Oh, Jake, Jake the, the snake. snake. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. And he like pretended like it was like going through, he was like, telling people that he lost his snake or something and it like went through Who a knows? toilet there Who was knows? there was a story like that and when i was growing up a snake got into our house now i lived in the woods um and i wasn't there but it was my dad's girlfriend mm -hmm. now everybody played pranks on each other yes. so she thought it was a fake snake and she got down in the floor with a pen and started trying to poke at it. And it didn't like that. And she freaked the fuck out. And my dad said the only way he could think that that happened is if it went through the pops up the sink. And after that, like... You were done. So sometimes... This is too much information. I'll be sitting on the toilet peeing and I'm like, what if, what if, what if there's like a rattlesnake? I had to stop and get up and look, even though I know, because I'm terrified that a snake is going to bite up in. Yeah, but you ain't even got nothing hanging. I do. I got a whole sack hanging and the shlami. So. Right, but like it could, it, it could bite. Yeah, but like it could bite off. <laughs> <laughs> into True. things sinking into you know those pumps after I got it off of me. Ugh. No thank you. Yeah. No thank you. And um, no thank you. Maybe we'll just appreciate from afar for, yeah. through the screen and through the information Casual Geographic gave us. What an awesome video. Worth the wait. Glad to glad to be able to check this one out with you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it and we will see you in the see next one. See you guys. Bye.